Zigu have officially announced their new X6200 transceiver, an HF transceiver that covers all the HF bands up to six meters. It looks a great transceiver to take out portable and it offers a number of interesting features. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what I know so far about it. Our sample is on its way to us and as soon as we get it, I'll do a more detailed review of it. But in the meantime, let me tell you what I know about this exciting new transceiver from Zigu, the X6200. Yes, Zigu have announced the new X6200 following on the heels of the X6100. Now, I think um, if I'm, I'm correct, Zigu will probably keep the X6100 in production because the 6200, although it's got some additional features, uh, Zigu tend not to replace models. They tend to keep the earlier models going and that's in line with a lot of companies now. I know in the camera markets um, a lot of the cameras, although they get new cameras in the range, the older cameras still continue and there's usually a price difference so I suspect that the Zigu X6100 will continue, I'm not sure. Anyway, the X6200 hasn't arrived yet although a sample is on its way to us because we're the main UK importers and it'll be exciting to see how it affairs. It looks interesting. I mean, the first thing you notice, of course, is the pair of handles on the front, which means to say you can lay it down flat on the desk without it resting on the knobs. The uh, display is a four inch uh, color display, which is a fair size, actually. It's not too much smaller than some of the lower priced uh, main line HF transceivers. So that's interesting. Front facing speaker, which I like. And the frequency coverage is quite interesting. It basically is the same as the 6100, almost, not quite, because it covers the um, medium wave frequencies, it covers all the HF amateur bands uh, from 160 meters to 6 meters, it includes the 5 meg band, but it also adds wide FM, so you've got the broadcast, you've got the, the FM broadcast from 88 to 108. But interestingly enough, it also now adds the air band. It adds the AM air band up to 136 megs, 108, I think it is, to 136 or 136.9, something like that. Anyway, it covers the AM air band, so it's gradually creeping up in the range. And I just wonder how far we are now away from another version which adds the 2 meter band. So the frequencies keep creeping up. So if you're an airband enthusiast, you'll be pleased to know that the 6200 now has the AM airband. And for uh, broadcast listening, you can use the wide FM facility as well on the X6200. Battery wise, it's now got a detachable battery, which I think a lot of people people will welcome. It means to say that you can actually carry, presumably, an extra battery. I, don't know, I presume Zega will provide the, the option of an additional battery, but the battery is detachable. Now, I noticed the power level um, is still 5 watts, but they have they seem to have downrated it to 8 watts on an external supply. Um, I seem to remember before on the 6100, I have to check this, but I think the 6100, they claim 10 watts. But so they've downrated it to 8 watts, and I suspect they've done this for um, c current consumption purposes. I know that with my Zigu X6100, I often actually do turn it down to 8 watts because there's a significant difference in current drawn between 8 and 10 watts, and the difference in the signal is very small indeed. So uh, going down to 8 watts is not uh, uh, a problem really in terms of signal strength, but it's certainly a plus feature in terms of battery consumption. Now with compact radios, it's always a problem as to where you put the buttons and Zigu, as I've done in the past, have used the top panel to provide additional buttons for band changing, mode changing, uh, the built-in ATU, which um, I'm sure is going to be very good. Zigu have got a good reputation now for their antenna matching unit, internal one, to be able to match all sorts of uh, uh, impedances. So uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, the uh, antenna matching in the new one will be exactly the same as in the 6100. 
The on if you look on the top panel, you'll find that there's a there's a looks like a rubber bung or a rubber plate there. I'm not sure what's behind that. There's no indication on the leaflet I've seen to indicate what that is. Um, I suspect it may be some sort of connectors there behind there, but I'm I'm not sure, and there's no way we can find out until we've actually got a sample. But I've got another photograph off the top of the radio, and it's clearly labelled expand component, which suggests that something will plug in there to expand the radio. Now, in the literature that Zigu have published, they do hint that the radio is capable of having expansion, including frequency expansion. So maybe there's some sort of frequency expansion module that goes in there. Could it be two meters? Could it be four meters? I doubt it's four meters. I, I think 70 meg megahertz tends still to get bypassed by a lot of the Chinese um, products. But it could be two meters. We'll have to wait and see, but certainly there's obviously something that plugs in there. And as they make reference to expanding the frequency uh, capability of the radio, it well could be a two meter transverter. We shall have to wait and see. Now, when I look at this X6200, it reminds me that Zigu are becoming a really serious player in the amateur radio market. There's a number of Chinese manufacturers that manufacture handhelds and a few manufacture HF transceivers, but Zigu seems to be the serious player. They've got a plan, a continuation plan. They're developing their products from year to year or even month to month sometimes. And it's nice to see some low cost products coming into the market with a major what is I think becoming a major player from China that is taking the amateur radio market in a serious way. In some ways I'm surprised that they haven't actually developed the G90 further because the G90 is probably the most popular budget priced HF transceiver now and it's been around for a number of years and everybody that uses it loves it. My only criticism is the screen is a bit small but there, there again, it's, uh, it's not a problem for most people. And it's a colour screen and you get an excellent VSWR meter. So I'm not quite sure why they haven't developed that. There must be a reason, but they seem to be concentrating very firmly on the low power market. Now, I just wonder how long it's going to be before we get a higher power transceiver from Zigu. But anyway, what I'm really saying is that there seems to be a plan. Zigu seem to be taking the amateur radio market in a serious way. They've been very successful. They're producing some very interesting transceivers and at somewhat competitive price. So, of course, we should have to wait and see what their next move is. But anyway, let's go back to the X6200. Zigu highlight the very wide ranging built in ATU. There's a panoramic display for the VSWR readings, which is very handy, so you can see the response of the VSWR across the band. And it's also got a built-in microphone, and if you look on the top panel, you'll see the PTT button there on the left. The design is SDR all the way, and it's got noise reduction feature built in. You, of course, have got the waterfall display, and they explain in very broad details that it's got two USB interfaces, and it seems to have a lot of facilities for linking to peripheral uh, items, although they don't go into any great detail there. But they do specifically mention FT8, and obviously it links into an external PC for that purpose. It has built-in recording feature for recording messages. I'm not sure whether that is CW only or audio. I think it's audio as well, because if you look on the side here, I think as well as the two USB sockets, you'll actually see what I think is a, an SD card slot. And here's another shot, and I think that definitely is an SD card slot at the uh, top left there. And if we look at the other side, you can see that the antenna uh, connection is a BNC. And if you want to increase your power, Zigo have now produced a lead which will directly connect the X6200 to their XPA125 power amplifier. So you now know as much about the X6200 as we do. It looks to be a very interesting transceiver. It's obviously designed to be attached to various peripheral items, which means to say that uh, it'll be very friendly with uh, 
uh, connection to a PC, etc. The fact that you can have a direct cable connection to their XPA125 amplifier will be welcome as well, because before you had to have this sort of little block integration block, which always seemed a bit fiddly, but if, this, if uh, what I read is correct, you can have a direct cable connection out of the amplifier. I actually have been using the X6100 for the last year or so, and I thoroughly enjoy it. I've used it out portable an awful lot, both on CW and SSB. I love the internal ATU, it's really good. I like the display, it's very clear to read. Uh, I do tend to use it from an external power supply and I throttle it back to around about 8 watts because the difference between 8 watts and 10 watts on battery consumption is quite noticeable. Certainly it would be nice, on, as they're going to have on the X, uh, X6200 to have a removable battery, that would be a, 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 great, uh, a great asset. So all in all, uh, it's good. Whether the USB sockets can be used to charge or not, I don't know. I'd be surprised if they weren't able to charge the radio, but we shall have to wait and see. In the meantime, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support on this channel. Thank you for your support in the shop. And as soon as I get a sample, I will do a more detailed video on this radio. In the meantime, you enjoy ham radio. Take care. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.